Hey guys, what's up? And let me just start off this video by saying um, the Act 7.1 beta, in my mind at least, was a massive, massive success. I um I did the first Act 7.1 beta when it first came out, and it was definitely a lot worse than this. This um they really used the elements of Cavalier difficulty to put this together. They didn't just make bullshit nodes, and whenever they did make a bullshit node, or not like bullshit node, whenever they made a hard node, they also gave you a, another node to like counter it, to like help you for one to it. Like they had nodes that helped the player to counter the certain node. So let me just go over the layout of uh, 6.1. So every ch uh, quest has six paths in it, and on ed each path, um, there is a boss at the end, like this Juggernaut, for example, that you have to fight two times. Like this boss is the Hella, and this boss is Weapon X. So they made it so there's three bosses in every quest, and you only have to fight each boss twice. So say you really are struggling on this Hella, uh, you don't have to fight her six times, you only have to fight her twice. I think that is a very good thing they added to the game. And they also added right before each boss this thing where you can change out a character for a different one, but keep in mind the character you change out has to be alive, you can't change like a dead character. Um, so, this is extremely good for, say you want to use like a full team for this path, but you um, don't have like, a good character with a boss to make this team, you have to like use everyone in your roster to do this path, but then once you get to the boss, you can get a character, switch out someone that's going to be useless for the boss, and get someone that's going to be useful. This was a very good add, and Overall, I thought Act 7 was a huge success. Let me just show you, like this path for example, Polka Dot Power, Immunity to Bleed, Highly Flammable, and Poison Vulnerability. So, there is these massive fights, 400k health around, Immune to Bleed, again. But also has Poison Vulnerability and Highly Flammable. So for me, this brings like a character like Domino into play. Domino is a character that I really never use, because whether you like her or not, she really doesn't like have that much util, she just has damage. But for this path, I was able to bring full dominoes to um, Trinity and just use heavies with domino and it was very, very fun. And you could have also brought in the poison character to do massive damage. The thing with um, Act 7 is there are a lot of nodes um, helping the player out. Like for example, on this path alone, every single node is if you bring in the class advantage, you get an extra 125% more damage, stuff like that. So, I do think Act 7 is a huge success. Um, out of the 36 paths, I was able to do 35 of them pretty much itemless without much trouble. But there is one, um, I think it actually is the same quest. There, there's one path that I think was bad, like just pretty bad overall. And I think it's this one. Yeah, it's Pressure uh, gauge, gauge 3, Gauge Gauge, I don't know how to say it, 3, and Mystic Focus and Rage and Mystic Wrath. So it definitely helps Mystic characters, you have 125% more attack, and whenever they hold block you get some power. But this path was really not that fun, because Pressure Gauge is a node that you start with 5 of like these charges, and every time you hit them, it adds 1, and every time you block it takes away 1. So, if you do a full combo, like right off the start, like you parry, right when the fight starts, you go to four, and then you do a full combo, you're already at nine, and then you have to parry like a few more times to do another full combo. And it really wasn't that fun. Mixed with the rage, um, if you didn't use a character who could like nullify the furies, they could get to five furies really easily, and then they'd go fully unblockable. And by going fully unblockable, you, um, what's it called? You couldn't make that pressure gauge gauge go down. I think pressure gauge is a fine node or rage is a fine node but together it's kind of bullshit because if you don't have like a good mystic option to nullify these buffs then it could go pretty bad pretty quickly. But even then um, good, uh, like Symbio Supreme and like Clairvoyant are pretty good for this path. I think Doom's decent too. But this path isn't that fun. I will say this path's kind of bullshit in some scenarios. I didn't find it fun a lot at all. It was just a lot of pairing. But I will say, everywhere else, um, it was fun. It made me like think of characters that, like I never would use, for example, like for this fight. Um, where is he? 
I have a six star Omega in my account, but he's not awakened. But I was able to bring him out for. Hey, where is this dude? For this boss. This is a loot cage mixed with electro. Every 10 hits, you falter, combo party, critical setup. And basically, it's just a big electro. And I didn't really have him, and I was too good for this. Especially, like, normally I would use Archangel or Quake. Quake works, but Archangel, since it's Luke Cage, is bleeding in. But I was able to bring out my 6 star rank 3 Unawakened um, Omega on the beta server. And with combo party and critical set setup, which makes your combos crit. Like, even a rank 3 Unawakened Omega Red, like, destroyed this guy. Like, like you, th they did a really good job of making, like, every path have something that helps the player. Like, for example, this path. Terminal Velocity. Very not fun node. Every time you crit them, they increase their power rate by 25%. And after 12 crits, it's at 300% power. So their power gains are crazy. Dulled. Crit chance is reduced by 50% for each buff active in you and debuff active in your opponent. Mighty Charge 1. They didn't use... Um, I've noticed they didn't use Mighty Charge like with the unblockable, with the unstoppable. They only used it where it's just immune to debuff. So I'm kind of glad they didn't make that. But then, to help the player on this pretty hard node, Foresight, if you intercept, you get a massive Fury, increasing your damage by a lot. They did nodes like that basically all over, with like Foresight, there was a lot of Foresight. Um, they also, I noticed, toned down a lot of like, like for example, like Mighty Charge, they toned it down, Oscillate, they used Oscillate 1 a lot, they toned that down a lot. The attack values were not that high, let me see. Let me just look into this fire. They, they, the health pools were definitely very big, but I think they needed to be that big because, you know, they can't be lower than X7 or X6 because that would just be weird. So for this fight, 400,000 health, it only has 8,500 attack, which I'm pretty sure back in X6, like when I, I need to prime, there were fights that were like, like 50, 60k attack and it was just retarded, but even the bosses have, I think, like the same amount of attack or just a little bit more. Like it was not, it was definitely not bullshit. And... This is a path that I thought, I mean, I could at least show you, is really cool. Like, they got some cool nodes. So, for each buff the defender has suffered since the start of the fight, every 10 seconds they receive a permanent Fury buff, increasing their attack by 25%. If these Fury buffs are nullified or removed in any way, the defender gains 25% of their max power for each buff nullified. Um, and then you also have Buffet and Mystic Curse. So, Mystic Curse goes wins with this. Whenever a Mystic attacker activates a special attack, they poison the defender, dealing 100% attack rating as direct damage for 7 seconds. The potency of the poison increases by 40% for every buff on the defender. So you might think this is like a weird combo, but I found using characters like Clairvoyant was really fun. You use Clairvoyant, okay? Actually, let me just show you. I, I just thought, they thought of like these cool node combinations that like, as Brian Grant would say, like, you don't want the fights to be like, too easy, but you also want, don't want them to be like, bullshit. So you can use characters like I normally wouldn't use, like 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 a rank one six star morning star. Let me just show you how this fight works. This first fight is definitely the hardest, so I'm happy they put the hardest fight first. So if you make them, so if you make a mistake, you don't have to like use a revive. You can just restart. But I just want to show you this interaction I found out with Clairvoyant. I just thought it was really cool. So for Terex, uh, oh also let me just show you there are globals, but the globals are kind of useless in my opinion. 6 star power, you gain a permanent passive fury increase in attack by 700 if you use a 6 star. Um, adrenaline rush, the attacker gains up to a... The attacker gains up to a 100% damage reduction all times. Scan with their current adre adrenaline. Adrenaline is gained after being struck. Hold the line, you gain 80 burst and block proficiency. Um, this was decent, but I didn't find myself bringing 6 stars over 5 stars for this reason. So let me just show you this Terex fight. So basically the way the poison works is the more buffs you nullify, um, the, um, what is it? The more buffs you nullify, um, oh, I'm trying to think, <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. The more buffs you nullify, the more damage your poison will do from the node. So for this node, I found that using heavies with clairvoyant and just putting a shit ton of poisons on them, every poison you put in them makes them get another fury. So then right here, you can stay in your poison phase. Look, there's 23 buffs. You launch the special to a clairvoyant, and you keep their power in check, and you put, like, a massive poison on them. Um, so I just thought this was, like, a fun interaction. This path is definitely one of the harder paths, but um, it's definitely still doable. And you can also use characters like um, Morningstar for this one. Build up, like, a crap ton of um, fury for them, and then just launch them one special two and kill them. 
Um, and then if the special doesn't kill them, it'll put a massive poison on them. Like, there was a time I got to, like, 50 Furies of Clairvoyant, and I launched my special, and, um, the enemy just, just took, like, a 6,000 poison per tick. It was crazy. Like, right now, we're just putting as many poisons as we can on them, because they count as debuffs. And you want to stay in your poison phase for this path, because, um, holy shit. Oh, yeah, I forgot about the attack increase. So, look, he's at a 67. Don't die. And then you launch this. Look at this damage. Look at this poison. It is doing 6,000 for a second. I, I just think this is a very fun node, very creative. But, but this is definitely the hardest fight. Most fights are definitely not as hard because it's Terax. So I just wanted to show you, like, there's cool node combinations that I thought were fun. That, like, um, the other Act 6 or Act 7 beta didn't have. They were just kind of annoying. So, for example, this one. Oh, wait, there was one I want to show you. Uh, which one is it? Gotta look around. Give me a second, guys. Um, I forgot which one is in. But wasn't this one? Wasn't this one? Um, trying to find it. Let me. Ah, oh, this is sad, guys. I'm sorry, but I literally can't remember which one it was in. Um, but basically, you get the point. There's a lot of nodes that are just like very fun for certain characters, to, like that they can use. Or is it? I might be one of these. Okay, it's this one. So, at first initial look, you might look at it and think it's bullshit because it has Aspect of War, and Aspect of War is very not a fun node, obviously. So at the start of the fight, basically, your um, over 50 seconds, your block efficiency decreases um, from zero to 100 percent, and then eventually they're fully unblockable. And every time they launch a special, they get a passive um, stun. Um, what's it called? A passive unstoppable for six seconds, and so it's just a very fun node. But then it's mixed with Cage Rattler, when a skilled character is blocked, um, no, I think what I mean, okay, yeah, what, okay, when you're attacking into the enemy's block, they have a 10% chance to passively stun the defender, so break through their block and stun them for two seconds. The chance for stunning them is increased by 10% for every 10 hits in the combo meter, and then it also has stun vulnerability, so you do damage, more damage while they're stunned. This node was extremely fun with Aegon. You build them up. And for like aspect of war, when you eventually need to intercept because um, you can't parry anymore, if they hold block, uh, it's very reliable because you can get like what four f five hits into their block, um, and there's a ten percent chance. And then after ten hits, it's a twenty percent. After thirty hits, it's a thirty percent chance. So the stuns are very common when you hit them through their block. It's like not hard to trigger them. So you can hit stun them through their block and get your combos in. And then with mixer stun vulnerability, you do crazy damage. They're just nodes like these that just like. Um, I, I, I just wish they would definitely continue doing because they're, they're very fun and I like what they're doing with this this was a very successful beta out of the I don't know how many bosses I forgot how many bosses they, they none of them were really that hard I think one of the hardest ones was um, this the, one of the first bosses because um, she just does a lot of damage through block which, where is she and I don't really know how to play her this probably might be one of the hardest bosses but you know these are some of these nodes definitely um, make you use characters that like you just wouldn't normally bring. Like I found a lot of ways to um, bring characters that like I just normally don't bring. Like this node, this node for example is really cool. I think um, can't stop, won't stop. So you do you do seventy five percent less damage unless you have an unstoppable. And then it also, but then it also has mixed with this node. So instead of just being can't stop, won't stop, like Act Six. Point three is a path of it, and it's very limited. They make it a lot more broad. Where Muscle Wizard, whenever a Mystic attacker knocks on the defender, the attacker has a fifty percent chance to gain an unstoppable buff for six seconds. If the attacker already has an unstoppable, so if you knock them down like two times in a row really quickly, um, they instead gain an indefinite Fury buff, increasing attack by fifty percent. So you can get four Fury, so you can get up to two hundred percent pretty easily, and you just have to spam knock them down. And it's shit like this that's just like. They're actually helping the player go around nodes, so you don't like, um, instead of just can't stop, won't stop, and you need to either do no damage or find the few characters who are unstoppables, um, you can use a mystic character. I also did find a little tip, by the way, that Magneto, uh, I bought him for this Sentinel, which are fun, and I, I forgot that Magneto, um, has unstoppable on his heavies, so Magneto is very good for can't stop, won't stop, just keep that in mind. But yeah, overall, Act 7 beta, except for like that one path, um, very successful.
Um, very good. Uh, very good indeed. I did not have a lot of trouble with this with my end game roster. Um, you can look at my roster. I don't have rank three Omega Red on the main account. He's rank two, but I used mostly. Um, looking at this roster, I used mostly Ghost, Archangel, Quake. If if you don't have Quake or Ghost, um, it's probably gonna be a little bit harder. Um, I used a lot of Magneto. I was, I was happy I could use Magneto. Is definitely a top tier mutant now because. And, you know, the newest content, Act 7, he was pulling weight on some paths. There were some paths that were just made for him. Like, there was one path that was, like, full bleed immunity, and I forgot what else. And they were, like, all metal, and, you know, if they're bleed immune, he basically one-shots them with his special three. It, it, like, it, I got to use characters that I thought that I never really get to use, and it's pretty fun. Like, on that Domino path, I never really used Domino. I got to use Red Hulk for a few fights on that path, too. Um... There was a lot of bleed in that, so I got to use my Omega Red, even Undupe to use a monster. So, yeah, um, very fun indeed. Um, definitely the MVPs. Ghost. Oh, also, one thing to keep in mind, if you're going to run Ghost Wasp Hood, what I loved about it, too, is... So, if you run Ghost Wasp Hood for, like, a boss, say, you bring him in, you got your Ghost, and then you bring in your Hood and Wasp. Um, two not really that helpful characters, pretty useless, honestly. But you go to a boss, and say you have a full team, and on the boss you don't need Hood anymore, and a lot of these I found. So before the fight, you could change out Hood, who's going to be pretty useless on basically every boss, and you could change him for a super good character. So like you could use him for that path, but then on the boss you can take him out. So I just thought the fact that you could change your characters was really good, and overall, good bam if you're watching this. Um, good job. This was very good, very well made. I very much enjoyed this. Um, so yeah, I'm excited, very excited to see what they can do with Act 7.2, 7.3, and 7.4. See if they can keep it up. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give a like, comment, subscribe, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.